Hello, I'm Malcolm Hartslip. I'm Janice Baker. <laughs> How do you become a Lord Mayor and why would you want to be a Lord Mayor? Find out next on Our Time as we meet Adelaide's 76th Lord Mayor. Yes. Yes, we've, well, we've been together for 40 years and it don't <laughs> seem a day too much. <laughs> but eight's eight a long years. time. It is. And we're doing well. We are. In fact, we've been working, doing stuff together now for even more, more years than we than want that. to know. 50 <laughs> something, something years. But um, it's interesting because this program, we're actually talking to someone very special right here in the studio. But before we do, let's get a bit of background. Yes, we should. Now, let's say the first local government in Australia was formed on the 31st of October 1840 with the election of 19 councillors to the new Adelaide Corporation, followed by the councillors' election of a mayor. The first mayor was James Hurtle Fisher and the first council meeting was held on the 4th of November in 1840. I love the clothes war by these three Lord Mayors from 1890 and also uh, William Townsend, who looks a bit more modern, in 1865. And now we're going to sort of jump forward because in 1919, Lord Mayors actually began here in South Australia. And in 2003, Michael Harbinson was the Lord Mayor. And in 2010, Stephen Yarwood was the Lord Mayor. And right now we have the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Martin Hasey. Welcome. And here's the real man the himself. Thank you, Malcolm. Lord Thank you, Janice. Welcome. Looking Thank very you for normal. Having me. <laughs> Looking very normal, having looked at what the Lord Mayors were wearing back then. Well, I'm not wearing the robes and chains today. So. I wonder why. <laughs> it's a little hot sometimes, John, I, I must say. And ceremonial occasions in hot weather, that can be hard going. Very uncomfortable. How that. often is it really just for the ceremonial um, There are many reasons. parts of the Lord Mayor's role, but during the ceremonial parts, which are like citizenship swearing in ceremonies, which we do about four times a year, yes. I would wear the robes maybe a dozen times a year, I guess. Okay. I'd wear the chains relatively more often. Every but day. the full regalia, every not every day. Pops them on in the morning just before he sits oh, down. No. But the full <laughs> regalia maybe a dozen times a okay. year. So where did life start for you in business? Because you are a businessman before you were really the Lord Mayor. I was. I, I studied um, property. I wanted always to be a property valuer. So I started a course at the old South Australian Institute of Technology, which of course is now UniSA. Mm. So I feel at home. And the, I did a course there and I worked in real estate for about five years. And when I was 26, I segued across for reasons I'll never be able to describe, and I opened up a retail store in Region Arcade just off Rundle Mall. Yeah. Was it because it seemed like a good idea at the time? I saw a gap in the market, mm -hmm. and I was not at that point in time an industry expert or a fashion expert or anything like that, but uh, I had done a few years working part-time with Country Road while I was studying, and I saw a gap in the market, and I thought, well, I'm going to give this a go. And in the early years, I fumbled my way through. But once I got the formula right, that business really took off. And it was called? It was called YouthWorks. It's a really well-known brand um, oh. here in South Australia. It was. We ended up with about 12 stores and wow. across Adelaide and Melbourne. Mm. And I also had a smaller chain of retail stores, which were like fashion sneaker shops, uh, footwear shops. And we had yeah. five of them, and they were called Soul Shoes. Very good. Wow. Yeah. So making... That is so very different to real estate. <laughs> yes, it is very... It couldn't be more different. But no. I must say, it, I, I knew how to negotiate a lease. And <laughs> they, they say in retail that your business sometimes is as good as your lease. And I just had some experience in doing that. So it did come in Start handy. Start up well. That's a, very, that's a very interesting angle I never yes. thought of. Because as you pointed out, you didn't have the retail knowledge of clothing. No, but I was did very... Did you have fortunate. a lot of help with that? I had some wonderful team members who were just great and they were very competent and they were very confident in that industry. And I learned quickly. Uh, and we, in, this was, you know, this was starting back in 1996. Mm -hmm. So it was a while ago now, but it, we'd, uh, it really grew. And um, it, uh, it continued to grow over many years and I was lucky enough to kind of run that whole ride. So it was great. Did you have a life plan with that? I did. And in many ways, I probably sold out earlier than what I thought I was going to. In the last few years of the business, I took on a business partner. Uh, and together, we really expanded that business quite rapidly, especially into Melbourne, where we ended up with more stores in Melbourne than we did, did in Adelaide. And Adelaide was very, very kind to me, I must oh, say. Man. It's terrific. 
And, uh, but we got an offer to sell, and uh, they don't grow on trees when you work in the retail industry, so we accepted it. In any uh, industry, I guess. No, they don't. No. And um, I always thought I was too young to sell out and kind of could have kept going for another decade. But um, uh, I guess in many ways, maybe if I hadn't, uh, I wouldn't be here. So the, um, it was a terrific journey and I learned a great deal and it was, oh, I think we had about 230 employees and it turned into a reasonable sized business. Mm. But had, had you always seen yourself in a position like this? Was that in the back of your mind as well? Uh, maybe subconsciously, yes. I kind of enjoyed leadership positions, mm. I guess. Mm. Um, and I had some experience of that with the company and then I went on to work for City Council. Well, running the Rundle Mall, um, That's right. That must have. But was that? Did you see that as sort of a step up or a step sideways? Oh, look, that was just wonderful. It was a step different. A step different. Because I had always worked for myself, and then to work with the local government, which really operates to the beat of a slightly different drum, mm -hmm. I really learnt how to get things done through consensus building, and we had, well, there are about seven hundred separate stakeholders on that Rundle Mall block between Grenfell Street and North Terrace mm. and King William Street and Pulteney Street. And there are property owners, shopping centre owners, there are lots and lots of retailers. And uh, it was wonderful because I really got, I got to know everybody. Mm. And um, we made a lot of changes to Rundle Mall over those years. And that was the years when Rundle Mall was upgraded and redeveloped and improved. And I, I hope Rundle Mall's a lot better for it. And um, it was- Did you ever get rid of the chewing gum? Off the mall. <laughs> yes. uh, well, interestingly, the new surfacing along Rundle Mall is you don't see chewing gum on Rundle Mall anymore. I mean, you used to see lots of it you because did, the right. old paving was very permeable. Uh, the new paving, you can just scrape it off in a second and you wouldn't know Brilliant. it was there. So yeah. it, that has well, improved. It, well, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because people don't realise you've got to be concerned about simple things like, like keeping that. it clean. And yes, the yes, things yes, like yes. chewing gum on the walkways is really annoying because it just spoils the whole look of everything. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so we did a comprehensive upgrade to run them all and uh, planted, I think, something like 43 new trees and mm. really upgraded the place. Mm. And I think since then it's responded very well. Is it finished or is there more to come? Well, we're now working on Gawler Place. So we very soon start an upgrade between uh, Grenfell Street across to North Terrace to bring both sides of Rundle Mall along Gawler Place up to that kind of similar Rundle Mall standard. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to make that area more pedestrian friendly. So it's, uh, the story just goes on. I guess for people who are watching the program in other states of Australia, you may or may not know what we're talking about, but. The reality is that um, having such a sort of boutique street as we have in South Australia, with many of the original buildings, it hasn't been totally built out yet, mm. we've got something we need to preserve at the same time because it's a uniqueness to this city, isn't it? I agree. Malcolm, it was the first city mall in Australia. So this was 1976. Mm -hmm. And Don Dunstan famously poured champagne into the Rundle Mall fountain. fountain. That's a very famous <laughs> photograph. Where's that now, the fountain? Uh, it's still along, there, out the front it? of Adelaide Arcade. Yes. It just, yes it and it yeah. used to be at the intersection of Gawler Place. Yes, it did. And um, so it, we, it's a bit of a trail blazing, blazing place from the mall because it's 522 metres long, which makes it the longest mall in Australia, very comfortably. It's a lot longer than Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane mm -hmm. or Perth. Um, and it was the first. And that was a real innovation mm. when Rundle Mall mm. happened because they closed down Rundle Street and turned it into a mall. Yeah. I remember. I there used to be trams going down. I remember trams going that's down. That's correct. That's, that's not going to happen again, is it? No, but there are trams, of course, going down North Terrace. Yes. And they'll be running fairly soon. Um, the interesting thing about, I guess, being in your position is the fact that you've had time to watch from a businessman things change and grow. Mm. Um, when you got the opportunity to, did you stand for council first? Was that what, how it happened? No, I didn't. Uh, I was the first person, I think, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, the first person to be directly elected to Lord Mayor in the history of the city. Oh, okay. So although I worked with city council and had a fairly good understanding of, of the workings of city council, right. I had never been elected to it. Right. So I'd never sat as a councillor and I went straight into the Lord Mayor's role. How did that happen? <laughs> With a great deal of hard please, work. Yes, I'm sure. please explain. Um, <laughs> this was 2014, so if we wind the clock back a few years, um, I had a small consulting business, yes. uh, which I've still got, and I stepped out of that business in probably sometime after Easter in 2014 and really campaigned almost full time 
for about five months prior to the local government elections in 2014. And you don't know the result. I mean, you just give it your best shot. Sure. So it's a real risk. Oh, it is. is. Was it like the business risk that you took with the stores? Uh, it's a different risk. It felt different? It's a, it's, a, it's a different risk. I mean, I think people are drawn to public life for many reasons, but most people want to achieve something good for their city or for yeah. their state or for their country. Mm -hmm. And I hope that never changes because that's what should attract people to public life. But mm. I campaigned seven days a week for five or six months and um, with a, you know, uncertain result at the end of it. But, you know, mm. in life you put... Take these... You jump, in with, jump yes. in with both feet and yeah. give it a go. And I was very fortunate that in November 2014, the people from the City of Adelaide elected me. And um, it was close, and, uh, but it was a great honour. So mm. I've worked very hard since then. Well, we'll be back in just a moment and we'll find out what Martin's views are for the rest of his mayoral time here in South Australia. It's interesting to note, talking about Lord Mayors here in South Australia, that there have only been two women who have stood and become Lord Mayors. Did you know that? Not in Adelaide. I didn't, I didn't know yeah. that myself until I Mr Googled it. No, OK. There no. Is did Maybe. you know that, Martin? I'm I sure did. did. It's uh, Wendy Chapman, mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, the first female Lord Mayor in the nation. So there's another first. Mm -hmm. And then Jane Lomax-Smith. So oh, that's, of that is mm. correct. Yes, yes. Mm. Martin, we live in, a, it's been described as a, a boutique city and many other different things. We've been called the arts capital of Australia. We've been called all sorts of things. Mm. And because currently in South Australia we have the Fringe Festival on, uh, a lot of people come into the city. What are your hopes for people visiting Adelaide, perhaps for the first time? What, what do you think we're trying to present to them? What are you trying to present to them? Well, we're trying to put our best foot forward. We are the fifth most livable city in the world today, and that's a great accolade. Absolutely. And we've got a goal to take us even higher up that leaderboard, and that's very much part of kind of... Is our, it? Who's number one? It's Canada. Uh, it? Melbourne. Oh, it's Melbourne. Is number one. So it's a sprinkling of Australian cities and Canadian cities right. that really populate the top five places right. around why, the world. Why do you think that is? Because we're a younger nation? I, it's a, the index is built upon a few things. Um, amenity infrastructure, culture, transport, accessibility, uh, beauty, and I think that's an important thing for cities. Cities have got to be beautiful places. Mm. Weather. Weather, and we've got a great climate. Yep. So we do really well. We do really well. Doesn't mean we can't do better, but we are in a good space. And to be kind of acknowledged as being the fifth most livable city mm. in the world, that mm. is a real accolade. But when, when the word livable is used, what does that really refer to? Does it refer to all of those things like transport, infrastructure, the type of buildings that we have? It or does. does it refer to climate and, or is it just all of those things? It's fairly like? holistic. Um, and it's an indirect reflection on the economy, but I would also suggest that that's our greatest opportunity for improvement. So whilst we're livable, we are also laying down plans for us to become more economically robust, to more, be more competitive, yeah. so that people have got really exciting jobs and we've got growing industries in Adelaide. That's really important. Mm. So if we can match up, for everyone visiting Adelaide, a really robust economy with this beautiful livable city, you'd almost argue that, that is, that's utopia. That's the perfect place you want to be Absolutely. in terms of a city. And that's very much our goal. So we've got plans for both, to mm. improve our livability and to improve our economic development. Uh, which must be difficult, but um, we met at the Carols by Candlelight last year and I was standing behind the stage at the Carols by Candlelight and it was just the moment when all the fireworks went off. And, you know, t sometimes in life you've got to seize a moment and remember it because it's one of those moments that is very special in life. I was standing on the steps, fireworks were going off, we're standing by the river running through the city, the Festival Theatre was on my left-hand side and the Convention Centre, and that was all lit up beautifully. The bridge that runs across the r river was all lit up beautifully. The football, the new football stadium was over there and the fireworks going off there and I think it was the Hallelujah Chorus playing behind us and, I don't know, 50, 60,000, however many people right. watching the show that was there. And I thought, this is one of those moments like Sydney has, in a way, of the fireworks on 
um, New, New Year's, Year's Eve. Eve. And sometimes we forget these things occur and we really have to get out to see things, don't we, to really appreciate where we live. And I just felt enormous pride being part of it, even though I had nothing to do with what I was looking at. <laughs> but do you think South Australians realise how special this place is? I think we genuinely do. Uh, I also think that we need to become greater advocates for our city, locally, nationally and internationally. We, tourism, for example, uh, is, I think it's worth about $6.4 billion a year to South Australia. Mm -hmm. And Adelaide as a city has been one of the fastest growing cities in the nation in terms of its tourism growth in do recent years. Do you think, years. sorry to interrupt you, but mm. do you think the Tour Down Under has had a lot to do with that, oh, the, having had that for the last few years? The Tour Down Under, which now has just had its 20th year, yes. is an incredible event because, I mean, that firmly puts us on the world stage. Yes. But I also think it's our fringe, it's our festival, yes. Yes. it's Wome Adelaide, it's a myriad of cultural festivals across the year, it's motorsport festivals, which we have throughout the year. Mm. We do so much. And if you look at, and they're just the events really in our public spaces. Mm. Then you go into our theatres. Then you go into our pubs and our clubs and our restaurants and our cafes and our wine bars. And there's things happening all the time. And I think it's our job to be advocates, to say, come to Adelaide. Imagine if all of us said, within the next 12 months to a friend or a family member interstate or overseas, come and visit me in Adelaide this year. I mean, that would have an incredible impact on our city. So I think uh, we should be proud of Adelaide. I think we've got every reason to be proud of Adelaide. Mm. It is a beautiful city. Sometimes we're a little bit down on ourselves and we shouldn't be. Well, that brings me to a question from what you just said. Uh, it's more or less how many of us know what is really here to see. Because when you're brought up in a city, you just take everything for granted. This is the way life is. And quite often we don't go out, as you said, to the theatres or to the, the different things. Clearly the fringe has really uh, got people leaving home to go and see something mm. that's on in the fringe. Mm. But, you know, it might be an interesting thing to ask if you're living here in South Australia, when did you go to places like the Barossa Valley? When did you use the beach last? I say every year I must go to the beach and go for a walk along the beach. <laughs> I only live 10 minutes from the beach. Every year I never do it. Mm. And yet if I'm overseas, I do it somewhere else, like probably you did when you were away last oh, year. No, we... You didn't walk along the beach? I did, but I use our beaches too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. But I do. The, the thing is, quite often we forget that we are in this city and we forget to use what we've got. Mm. That's what I feel. Do you find this is a common thing amongst particularly people that complain about the city? I think we can sometimes get a bit complacent. And if you've got a city whereby you are literally 15 minutes from the beach, 15 minutes from the Adelaide Hills, mm. 30 minutes from wineries in all directions, mm an incredible art scene, wonderful fresh food, an extraordinary Adelaide Central Market, uh, Rundle Mall, Main Streets, a good sense of community, a very multicultural place. Oh, very much so. It's safe, it's clean, it's friendly, and we've got good weather. I mean, that is a pretty good report card. It is, but you know, the, how often do people go to the town hall? Because that's an amazing building. And looking through the building, the underneath part, uh, the hall is at the, at obviously on the first floor, mm. but what's behind the main hall, the room behind there, what's that called? I, the Queen Adelaide Room. The Queen Adelaide Room. Beautiful old architecture, beautifully restored, um, just a rather special place. Mm. We've used that as a dressing room for many years. We did, when we did the concerts. <laughs> Doing the concerts yeah. there. Um, is there the opportunity for people to find out more about sort of tours of places like the Town Hall? Yes. And can they see where you live in that lovely office with the big brown furniture? They can. Well, <laughs> last year, for the very first time in, I think, many decades, we actually opened up Adelaide Town Hall for an annual open day. Oh, great. And we did that in September, October last year, and we're now going to make that an annual. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now, we had something like about 3,700 people through the doors in about five hours on a Sunday. And we married it up with the, uh, His Excellency the Governor, who was opening up uh, Government House on North Terrace. Mm -hmm. And people en masse were just moving between From one, to the other. one to the other, and they saw both. And we Did had... they hop on the tram? That's the thing. I'm sure they hopped on the buzzing. tram. That's a lovely view, looking down that street. It is. It really is a lovely view when the trees are all out with leaves. And... From the balcony of Adelaide Town Hall. Oh, it's perfect. A, it's a great view. It's where the Beatles stood in 1964. I was opposite with my mum. <laughs> I was 15. I was opposite. 
Oh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't born then, of course, but um, <laughs> I was at Waving. Yes, I've got fond memories of that from every, pers uh, every uh, mm. perspective. Um, so your plans, what do you want to achieve in your time? Well, I'm very focused on making sure that we maintain our credentials in the livability space, if not improve them. So that is constant improvement every day. So how do you express that, though? It's easy to use those words, but... What have you got planned? Are there any, can you give us any tips as to what's in your head? Loads and loads of projects, of which many are rolling out as we speak. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing work to improve our laneways. So the laneways between the Adelaide Central Market right down to the Adelaide Railway Station. Mm -hmm. So Bank Street and Bentham Street. And, Fantastic. Uh, Top and they're, they're great. Yes. They're all being That's upgraded. That's where you find some interesting architecture as well. You do, and mm -hmm. you find really interesting quirky little businesses. And they're yeah. kind of like places for people. We partnered with the state government to extend the tram down to the east end of Adelaide, down to the old Royal Adelaide Hospital site. Uh, that's been an important project, and we're doing all the streetscape work along North Terrace. Well, do you think that will improve pe uh, attendances at Botanical Gardens? Because we forget we've got this garden right in the middle of the city. Absolutely. Absolutely. North Terrace, in terms of, and we, of course, refer to that as our cultural boulevard, mm. is a stunning street. It is, isn't it? And there's nothing like it in Australia. To have a street that's got... Two universities, an art gallery, a museum, a state library, a botanic gardens, a wine centre. Mm. Down the other end, an old Adelaide jail, an mm. old railway station. And even a Scientology place. A Scientology but, place, hotels, heritage yeah, buildings. The diversity a, is amazing. A Samri building. I yes. mean, it, it is just an extraordinary street. So we're improving that. Um, we're laying out new bikeways around Adelaide. So we're just working on the Frome Street project and lifting that up to a much higher level of specification. Uh, we've got a goal towards carbon neutrality. We are doing so much work around planting and greening and pruning and doing all this work That's to improve one of the our, things. our gardens and our squares and our parklands. Yes. Um, Just hold the next thought because we need to take a commercial break and we'll be back in a tick with Martin. A special guest on this episode is the Lord Mayor of Adelaide. Martin, um, just in a nutshell, what are your real dreams for the, for the future for the city? Well, we'd like us to ultimately be the most livable city in the world. But how are we going to get there? That's the important thing. One, focus on community. So the events that we support, of which there are literally dozens, if not hundreds every year, which are the multicultural events in Adelaide, are incredibly important in defining us as a city. Mm -hmm. Technology is very important. So City Council is laying out a fast data network. Isn't that brilliant? I love that. It's terrific. Mm. So our position... That will mean, sorry, that will mean that, that you can access that, obviously, if you're in a building within the city square mile, so to speak. Including and North Adelaide. It's bang. And, oh, OK. Including and then North Adelaide. You've just bang it straight in. So what that means is we're positioning Adelaide as the city with the fastest data network in the nation, if not the Southern Hemisphere. And we've, we've done a partnership deal with TPG Telecom. We've started the rollout. We're right into it now. And we think by about Christmas, we might have about 1,000 commercial buildings connected up into the network. That's really Will it defining. be better than the NBN, do you think? It's 100 times faster than oh, the NBN. Oh, gosh. <laughs> As so. we still pedal. <laughs> That's great. That's a great achievement. And I think thirdly, sustainability. Adelaide's got very good credentials in terms of water management, energy management, traffic management, data management. This is all under this kind of broad umbrella called sustainability. But what's happening here in Adelaide, and certainly the city, it's turning into an industry with architects and engineers and designers and students and universities and research and development labs all doing really interesting things. And it's attracting more people to work in Adelaide. And we're starting to see that on the skyline as well, which makes a big difference. Martin, it's just been great. Thank you so much for your time. I realise time is precious in your position, mm. but it's great to meet you as a real person rather than just seeing you making a speech somewhere, which is how most people would see you, I suppose, these days. Thank you, Malcolm. And thank you very much, Janice. Thank I really you appreciate so it. Thank you so much. It's thank a pleasure. Uh, and we hope you've enjoyed this conversation with Martin, the Lord Mayor of Adelaide. And we hope you'll join us next time. Yes. Who's please. on next time, Janice? <laughs> Who is on next? She has no idea, but <laughs> I do. And we'll tell you when we meet you next time. So until then, keep yourself nice. Take care. Bye for now. Bye.